Hey, 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 what is up, Yappa fam, and welcome to the Yapostolic Podcast, the podcast where we talk about being young, being apostolic, taking that power and putting it into action. I'm super excited that you guys are listening to, the, to today's podcast. The reason being is because I'm always excited that you guys are listening, watching, or living with, is that, if you're on a live, is that, does that mean like you're living? You know what I'm saying? Because, like, you're on a Yap Alive or something. You're living. Get it? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, so whatever you're doing with the Yap Two Today content, I'm excited that you're on it. Um, welcome. Uh, it's just me and um, the laptop in front of me and some nice, super hot pasta that was made by mommy. <laughs> I try to rhyme all that stuff. Anyway, so, um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, and some coffee that's uh, that was made about seven hours ago and is ice cold. Anyway, um, so welcome. I'm glad to have you sitting next to me. I'm imagining you sitting to my left or to my right and us talking about uh, what we're going to be talking about in today's podcast. Now, I'm excited about uh, what I have to share with you guys, mainly because I really, I love having the the podcast and the way that I'm doing them now. Um, no editing, just raw, uncut, straight up um, talking <laughs> from me. And I hope I don't bore you. I hope that I'm not like, uh, they, I mean, you guys are kind of seeing me. It's almost like a TOTD. A TOTD, uncut, you guys are kind of seeing me like that. And so um, I know, at least with videos, especially being on YouTube, you know, people go from video to video to video to video. And hopefully you're listening to this in the car or you're listening to this somewhere where you're not hopping from podcast to podcast to podcast to podcast because I do not think I'll be able to retain you <laughs> like uh, what I do on YouTube, okay? And what I mean by that is that I think I may just be boring on the podcast. I don't know. You guys can let me know in the comments around this video or in a iTunes review what you guys think of me or you guys can DM me what you guys think of the podcast. Anyway, so we're here. We're talking about it. What are we talking about today? Well, first, I'd like to give you guys um, kind of a life update. I remember when I first started doing podcasts and I really got serious about it. Uh, R.I.P. 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 podcast is a long lengthy ones. Anyway, hopefully we go back to those, which would be super awesome. And um, uh, yeah, that'd be just super awesome. We can get back to the one hour um, podcast, maybe have some super awesome guests on. But before then, um, we're going to do these ones because <laughs> they're easier, easier to get out. But anyway, I remember back then, the structure of the podcast was um, we had the story of the week. We had uh, the young segment of the podcast, the apostolic segment of the podcast, then the power in action segment of the podcast. And then kind of just the outro, what do we do, the actionable steps. Well, that was kind of a difficult, you know, format to follow because uh, I couldn't, it was very difficult to format everything to, okay, what, you know, is the natural side of young people and then the spiritual side of young people and then tying it all together because some things just are better taught in a different way. And so... Um, I think I'm going to ditch that <laughs> format and just kind of go with, you know, what normally works for um, for podcasts. It was a great idea, but just didn't work. Anyway, so I'm just going to cut on and just talk to you guys like normal. And again, I hope I don't lose your guys' interest. Anyway, so here we are. Um, I'm trying to think. What was I going to say? I, okay, well, first, this is my third or fourth take. Actually, this is my fourth take of um, the podcast uh, <laughs> as I was doing the other ones, I got phone calls in the midst of them. Um, the voice memo app was not working. I mean, it's just like horrible. So yeah, please forgive me as I search through my memory data bank in order to find um, what we're going to talk about. But anyway, so, oh, this is what I was going to say. Okay, guys. So over the past few months, um, there's been a lot of changing in my head and, um, you know, ad- ad- adopting new principles learning new strategies, um, really figuring out how to accomplish in the natural, okay, not not necessarily spiritual because spiritual and natural things are completely different, <laughs> like night and day, in the natural specifically, um, you know, uh, dreams, goals, ambitions, aspirations, desires, uh, things that, you know, you feel the Holy Ghost called you to do, well, when he called you to do them, um, it's not that he necessarily called you to pray them. Not necessarily that he called you to fast him. Not necessarily that he called you to do something spiritual about it. 
but really something natural. And so like Yappa 238, you know, the Holy Ghost told, excuse me, as I scoot my pasta to the side, um, the Holy Ghost told me, you know, Yappa 238. And so I had to get out there and do something in the natural, you know, Instagram's natural, internet's natural, YouTube's natural, you guys, you know, flicking through your phone to find this podcast, that's all natural stuff, right? Um, so as I'm thinking about, you know, these things in my natural mind or these things and how to like accomplish and stuff like that, I'm taking these principles that I've worked for many other people who have, have been successful in accomplishing natural things. And it's f- super funny because at the pinnacle, the peak, the top of these people's performances, I guess you would say, you can find those principles in the word of God. And it's super awesome because it's like, oh my goodness, at the end of it all, it all comes back to right here this black leather bound book okay this bible that i have in my hands everything comes back to this it's funny because uh i remember hearing uh, i think it was about a few years ago that scientists found the smallest you know uh thing uh in the universe and it was some say it was a particle some say it was a wave or some type of wavelength or something um or this form of energy that could not be created nor destroyed and as they're looking through the microscope um, it was funny because they said that the, that little thing of energy, from what I can remember, um, I, I'll get this right, uh, sooner or later, <laughs> um, because I'm, uh, hopefully in the future going to release some material for the Apple 238 audience regarding, uh, apologetics and stuff like that. But, um, at the end of it, you had, uh, this, this scientist who, he was fed up. He was super mad. He was super like, oh, I cannot believe it. I tried to disprove God. And here I can see the evidence of him. And then it's funny because all science agrees that the, the universe doesn't operate as, um, as a machine. The universe operates as a thought. And as if there is some master controller over the universe that has set everything in the... Oh my goodness. Oh man. Woo! That makes me want to shout, dance, and just worship God because God is real. And it's funny because, you know, um, again, I'm saying like these people who you know, operate at these crazy, like the, the, the most successful of the most successful, the principles that got them that success are again, right here in this leather bound, uh, or on your iPhone <laughs> or iPad, <laughs> black leather bound book. Right. So anyway, um, I'm just super, super excited about that. Super humbled at that and just taking this information in. But as I'm taking the information in, I'm like, uh, well, let me ask you guys this. Have you guys ever been in the, in the position where you've, You've heard something new, maybe a new revelation, a new understanding, and it completely rocked your world. It completely blew your mind like to Jupiter, (laughs) just out of this world. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of been what's going on, what, what has been going on over the past few months. And so I don't know if you guys follow me on my personal account. You guys don't have to. This isn't a plug for that. But um, you guys may have seen a while ago, I was in a white beanie. And um, I was telling you guys, uh, like, hey, I want to start, you know, documenting some of the things that the Holy Ghost called me to do outside of the Apatite 38. Um, Through, uh, what was it? Like through, I don't even know how I did it. I just know that I I woke up that morning and I said, Adil, you need to do something. You need to do something and that, that you know the Holy Ghost is calling you too. You need to do it and take action right then and there. So within like, literally, I, I, I got up from, from the bed. I was, uh, we were in vacation in Tahoe. I was vacationing in Tahoe. I got up out of the bed, off the bunk, and I'm standing there. And I'm like, I need to create an Instagram account. So I said, okay, let's create a new Instagram account. So I went over there and I uh, went to Gmail and I said, you know, uh, I think it's Avial Easter official dot, uh, or at gmail.com or something like that. So I created that email account, boom, boom. I said, okay, and I have the email account and I was working so fast. I said, okay, now what do I do? I got to go from that to uh, creating the Instagram account. So I went to Instagram and I went, okay, so what's the name going to be? Avil Easter, because no one has the, the, the username Avil Easter. I should have had it for years and years and years, but no one had it, which I was thankful for. So I got that, grabbed it, and then I didn't have a profile picture. So I was like, okay, I need to take a profile picture. So when we went out, we took a profile picture um, and I put it on there and then I was like, I got to record a video. So I recorded the videos, all that stuff super quick, all within one day. And I had the foundations of um, a new thing, a new personal endeavor that is outside of the Apple 238. Now, I'm, I tell you that story not to you know try to plug for that, but to let you guys know, um, kind of that has been the my MO, my modus operandi, the, the mode of operation, the thing that has been driving me is quick, speed, how fast can you get to what God called you to get to? And so um, with that, 
And you have the Yapistock podcast coming out the way they're coming out now, where I can just talk them to my phone, voice memo, get it to you guys, and you guys can have it. So there's a lot of things going on, and I apologize because in this season there's been, like I said, a lot of things going on. So um, normal TOTDs haven't been like that, doctrinal videos and stuff like that haven't been. But um, we're here, <laughs> and um, uh, I want you guys to kind of grab something as, uh, I don't even know how long these podcasts are supposed to be, like an hour, because if it was supposed to be an hour, I have six or five more segments of 10 minutes. Um, but if it's supposed to be like 20 minutes, I don't, I'm halfway done. Anyway, so um, I don't know how long you guys want to stay with me or roll with me. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, yeah. So I'm thinking about those things and they're changing my life. And I get into 2019 just moving. And I, I would say I, I would like to be moving faster. Um, but I don't know. Actually, I do know how to. And so real quickly, guys, I'm going to very briefly go over some of the most strategic ways for you to move fluidly into the goals and the dreams, the aspirations, the visions that the Holy Ghost has given you to accomplish. Now, real quick, I'm going to say a word of prayer just so for my sake <laughs> that um, I can deliver everything that the Holy Ghost has, uh, has in store for today's podcast. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray that you loose my mouth, loose my tongue, loose my heart to uh, transition and take the message that you've given me and give it to these young people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and Nazareth. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Anyway, guys, so, um, one thing, one of the most, like the, the, the number one thing that has helped me over the past year, I won't even say that's helped me, but is like one of the most successful things that you can do in life is not use excuses. Okay. And to learn what excuses look like. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, well, I can't do what God's calling me to do because I don't have enough money or I don't have the right ped pedigree or I don't have the right last name or I don't have a big youth group or I don't have the bus to start with. I don't have this and I don't have that. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And when you really begin to think of what excuses are, those are are really excuses. And the definition of excuses that I use that it helped me in my life is that an excuse is anything that stops you from your goal, the thing that you want to do, any obstacle. And it could be a legit one, but it's still an excuse. You know, like, okay, so for example, you know, um, there's times where I was in youth music and would ru be rushing to church. We're going, going, trying to get there as soon as possible. And we get there 10 minutes late. So we walk in 15 minutes late, sometimes even 20 minutes late. We get in there 20 minutes late. That's crazy, right? So we walk in, everybody's looking at you because, you know, you had an important role to play. Like, where you been? <laughs> We've been waiting for you. And I'm like, oh, man. And in those instances, you can say, you can tell the truth. Well, there's traffic, right? Or, well, you know, um, my sister, she wasn't, you know, quick at getting ready. Or I just got off school, I just got off work and I had to run here and it was difficult. You know what I'm saying? All those things are legit, right? They're too legit to quit <laughs> unless you quit them and you don't use those excuses, right? And you may, you know, say, oh, that's the reason. Well, honestly, the way I've been taught and the way that has super helped me is a reason is an excuse in a three-piece suit. It's a really done up excuse, because remember, we're going to use the definition of an excuse being uh, whatever hinders you from your goal. Um, and so using that, you would say, okay, well, what was my goal? My goal was to be here in time for music practice. Why? What hindered me? Well, the traffic and the this and the that. Those are all excuses, right? Now you got your excuses. Now... This may be a little far out. People are probably thinking like, man, Ava, that sounds so weird. I've never heard that before, but, but just hang with me. Because watch what it does. Watch, watch, what, watch what taking your excuses and annihilating them does. Okay? So you say, okay, those are all my excuses. And everybody can believe them. Everybody can believe them. But to those who actually do something and, and you know, they're, they're successful, whether in spiritual things or natural things or just all around that doesn't equip you with the ability to change the situation. Responsibility, taking accountability is the route to go. 
And now when we start thinking, you know, oh, I remember my, my parents are telling me about responsibility. My parents are telling me about accountability. And I remember them talking about that and, you know, trying to place it all on me. And, hey, you're, you're accountable for what your younger brother does. And you're accountable and responsible for what your younger sister engages in. Because if you do that, they're going to do that. So you got to be responsible. Well, that's true. But where did that go when we turned 13, 14, 16, 18, 22, 25, 38? Where did that go? The need for accountability and responsibility is still there, right? And it gives you power. Responsibility gives you power. So if we want power, power to what? Power to change, power to grow, power to do, power to accomplish. We have to take responsibility. So when we take 100% responsibility over our situation, let's look at the music practice example with that lens. So well, Avial, and this is what I did. I never offered an excuse or reason. I did my best not to as to why we were late. Now, oh, Avial, you're late. Ah, yeah, man, I'm sorry. Just let me get up on the keys. You know, hey, you know, you're, you weren't on time, or this has been, this is like the fourth or fifth week in a row. You've been, yeah, I know. I'm super sorry. I apologize. Okay, just let me get to what I'm doing. And I'll explain what that did to me, but looking, looking back at the little story, I'm kind of jumping around here. Um, the traffic, not being ready in time, just getting off work, all that stuff, right? Well, if we understand those to be excuses, we can shave those off and say, okay, I can't use those excuses. That gives us responsibility. That gives us accountability or that puts us in a position where we have to be responsible because if the, if the excuses aren't responsible for the situation, who else is going to be responsible for, this, for the situation? You are. And if you're responsible for the situation, you have the power to change it. So then what you do is you say, okay, I am super sorry <laughs> that I'll, I'm late. And then you begin to file in your mind. You say, Avial, you know, or your name, insert your name here. What can I do in order to not be, na- be late the next time? What can I do? Well, I'm 50, you know, five minutes was due to traffic. Ten minutes was due, you know, me making a sandwich before we left. So what I'll do is... I'll leave five minutes earlier and I will make a sandwich or I'll eat 30 minutes before I get off work if you have a break or something like that. Or I will grab something fast on the way to the house before I have to get dressed and get to youth service. So now what you've effectively done is you've you've taken the responsibility, you've stripped it out of the hands of the excuses and you hold it. And remember, responsibility is power. So now you hold your power to do what? To change. And so then what happened and what happens is that you begin to eliminate that which puts you in a negative position. Or you begin to eliminate that which pushed you into a place of not achieving your goal. Your goal was to be there for music practice. What hindered you? But because you took responsibility, you changed the situation. Guess what? Now you have the power to, uh, or, or excuse me, you took responsibility for the situa- situation. Now you change the situation because you have the power to change the situation because you took responsibility out of the hands of excuses. You've understood and you recognize what excuses were and you eliminated them. Is this kind of making sense? I really hope this is because first off, I hope I'm delivering it right because <laughs> I'm kind of spotty, I feel. Hopefully, you know, in time, as the year progresses, I'll get better at you know, these one take type scenarios, (laughs) but also because it can be kind of foreign. I remember when, uh, I first read, um, I read someone, uh, and, and they were saying, they said, everything in my life is my fault. And the statement blew my mind. I was thinking, wait, whoa, 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 what? How can everything in your life be your fault? But now, I don't believe the statement is true. You know, if something happens to you, I don't believe it's your fault that that thing happened to you. I don't believe the statement 100%. But I, got, I grasped what this person was trying to say. And what they're trying to say is that everything is my responsibility. The way I feel. The way I act. The way I react. The choices that I make. The way that I take. All that is my responsibility. And us as, and, 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 and as young apostolics... If we took that, oh my goodness, you guys, would be like terrors to hell because it would force us into a place of activity, a place of action. You know, when um, my school's not saved right now, not everybody in this school is not speaking in tongues 
uh, or baptized in Jesus' name right now because of me. How do I change it? Do you kind of see what that would do? You kind of see where the, what, what power you're get, gaining back by eliminating excuses? Everybody in my city has not been witnessed to because of me. How do I change that? That's pretty powerful. You guys are probably already thinking of ways that you can change it, right? Well, then every soul needs to matter to me. And I need to talk to and witness to every soul that, that I come across in this city. You know what I'm saying? You guys kind of see, kind of see where I... Where, the reason why I am not... Um, I'm trying to think because I, you know, for me, I know Yappa 238, my goal is growth, expansion is, is actually that's not my primary goal, but that's definitely something that's always in my mind because I know my primary goal is to uh, train young apostolics to the best of my ability, right? And so if I know that's my mission, um, I, I know that I need to be able to touch young apostolics and growth is a major part of it, right? And so as I think of that, um, I, I try to... I need to find, you know, connection points with you guys um, because, uh, I'm, you know, that's something I need to do. You know, what are you guys involved with and stuff like that? Maybe you guys can leave a comment down below if you've gotten this far into the podcast um, about, you know, some of the things that you guys are interested in so I can, you know, hopefully relate on those levels. But for me, it's like the reason why I am not, I'm not at the moment at 10,000 followers on Instagram is not because people don't like the content, is not because of this, not because of that, not because I... Um, you know, I say the wrong things or all the mishaps that happen with, in regards to spelling and grammar and all that stuff, right? It's not because of those things. So what I'm doing is I'm taking those excuses and I'm saying, um, excuse me, Mr. Excuse. Let me have my, let me have responsibility back. Let me have my power back. And then I say, it's because I don't, you know, implement certain strategies or because I don't do this or I don't do that. Then when I begin to take responsibility, then I can ask what I call the how question. How do I get to that 10,000? How do I get to 100,000? How do I get to a million? How do I get peop- more people you know, uh, trained through some of the Yappa 2 3 training? Or all of the Yappa 2 3 training? How do I get more people in it? When I begin to take responsibility away from the excuses, I get blessed from it. Because I know what to do in order to change it. Faith without works is dead. And if excuses can stifle your works, excuses can stifle your faith. That makes sense? <laughs> I hope that makes sense. <laughs> uh, because cause you're, you, you just, we can't use excuses, guys. We got to recognize when, them when, I'm com- when they're coming. So, for example, why well, don't have the time to pray? Excuse. You know, I can't pray in the mornings. And I'm saying that this is the only slot that you have, the only time period that you have. I can't pray in the mornings. Excuse. Um, I can't fast. I don't know how to. Excuse. The answer to those things is when you begin to say, okay, I, I don't know how to pray for an hour a day. Okay, well, I can learn. When you take the power out of the, the, the excuse and put it into your own hands, the responsibility and say, okay, so Abel, okay, so so-and-so, Jack, Jill, whoever you are. I, how do I, um, and I don't really mean if your name is Jack or Jill, I, I'm not trying to call you out, <laughs> I promise. But I'm um, just like kind of random names I'm using. But how do I go about doing that? Well, I can learn how to pray for an hour a day. The opportunity that I have training for that. I can learn to fast, which we will have training on that. <laughs> I can learn these things, right? I can do this. I can do that. I can show I can show up five minutes early. You know what I'm saying? Well, we're not having and experiencing, you know, these awesome, powerful moves of God in our church services, so I'm just going to sit down with the rest of everybody. No. Take the responsibility out of the excuse of it's everybody's fault that the Holy Ghost isn't moving and get out there and have a Holy Ghost shout down to get the Holy Ghost to move and you think, well, well, if your shouting doesn't get the Holy Ghost to move, dancing doesn't get the Holy Ghost to move, how can the Holy Ghost moves when he wants to move? Yeah, but you tell that to blind Bartimaeus. 
Jesus, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Shh, Bartimaeus, quiet down. The master's busy. Jesus, 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 have mercy on me. Bartimaeus, come on, dude, chill. Jesus, Jesus, until he got the attention of the master. So you can't take actions to get the attention of the master. How committed are you to him? Take responsibility out of the hands of excuses and say, this service is going to be made or broken by what I do. And I promise you, if you have that resolve, if I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, God will move on your behalf. That's happened to me before where there's two people in the building that were on the same page. I was myself, by the grace of God, and the preacher. And the Spirit of God moved. And I got made fun of because, <clears throat> excuse me, because of my, uh, uh, literally, I got made, pe- people who, literally my friends made fun of me because of my uh, demonstration of, I guess you'd say, being in tune with the Spirit or, you know, intercession or whatever it was. So, but, you know, dirt off the shoulders, not, not uh, crying about that. So, you can do it, trust me. If there's a dead service, take responsibility for it. And I know it sounds bad. You're like, well, Ava, you're telling me every single dead service that I have is because of me? Hey, if you want that next level of power, dominion, and authority, you got to take responsibility. Okay? Now, I know you guys may be thinking, well, Jesus didn't do many many miracles in, in Nazareth because they didn't believe. That's true, but he did still perform some. <laughs> Not many, but some still were performed. Okay? Take the responsibility in your hands and say, this service is going to be made or broken because of me. And I promise you, you start doing that. Just think, what can, what can God do with someone who refuses to have a dead service? Just one person out of 200 people, 300 people, 1,000 people, 10,000 people, however large your church is, two people. God, I refuse to, not, to have a dead service tonight. I refuse to have a dead service. I refu- God, I'm going to connect with you. What is God going to do? He's going to move. Why? Because that's just what he does. You're demanding it. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, this is super powerful. Something that's changing my life as I use it very, very regularly. So take 100% responsibility. I know that sounds whack. I know that sounds weird. I know that sounds foreign. I know that's like, but Avil, I didn't do it. But Avil, it was it was traffic and, and it was an accident that that one uh, guy had and, and he wrecked it all for for everybody. It was because my boss kept me later. It's because, you know, I, I uh, my, my church, they're not really wanting it as bad as I do. Okay, yeah, I hear all that. I, I got you. But are you going to leave your your responsibility and accountability in the hands of of excuses. Remember, our responsibility is our power. Our, our, our uh, accountability is power. Are you going to leave your power in the hands of excuses? If you want to, then go ahead and say those things and take those things to heart. But if you don't, and if you really want change, I'm telling you guys, this is the key to it. If you really want change, if you super do duper de uber want change, take responsibility. Don't let it die in the hands of your excuses. Change your world. Change your city. Change your school, change your church, change your prayer life, change the trajectory of your family. Those of you guys, first timers, new uh, 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 new converts, right? First generation, change the entire trajectory of your family. I don't care if you're 28, if you're 48, if you're 78. You don't let excuses live in your life and you take responsibility. And even if that sets you in a place of desperation, You've got to get a hold of Jesus by taking 100% responsibility and saying, my family's not going to be this way. I'm not going to live this way. I refuse to be like this. I'm going to do something about it. And in those instances, and I'm pretty sure you can find this with every single miracle in the Bible, excuses do not hold the, the responsibility from the person who got their miracle. Excuses didn't hold their responsibility. What they did was they took the, the responsibility. Well, there, there's so many people here. How can I press through the crowd to touch the hem of his garment? How? There's, there's too many people here. Je- Jesus, ah, oh, man, what am I going to do? My friend, I'm, we brought him here on a stretcher. Like, how are we going to get? There's so many people in the house. Well, then tear the roof off. Press as hard as you can until you just touch the hem of his garment. Whatever you got to do, take responsibility from your excuses and live victoriously. Guys, I'm telling you, this is absolutely powerful. This changed your life. 
Love you guys. That is going to be it for the Yappa Sog podcast today. I can keep going on and on and on and on and on and on and on with different examples, but I believe you guys got the point. You guys take 100% responsibility and accountability for everything in your life, especially in places that it matters. You're going to see your life change. You're going to see God move in a way that he does not move with everybody else because you're taking responsibility. You think that the evangelist steps into the pulpit and all of a sudden just this miraculous deal where he, now I'm not not saying this, there's people and there's uh, preachers who operate in this where they can step into the pulpit and have complete and total dominion. But if they don't grab that, if they don't seize that, if they don't step in the pulpit and assert themselves, right? If they don't, or if they don't pay for that through prayer, through fasting, through, you know, spiritual warfare, through, you know, all those that just build a man of God. If they don't take responsibility and accountability, or in or, oh, excuse me, when they build that, when they have that, that is a telltale sign that they have taken responsibility of their prayer life. This is my gospel. This is my Jesus. This is my Bible that I'm going to put into my heart because my God told me so. This is my prayer life. I'm going to touch my Jesus and I'm going to submit my flesh. They're taking 100% responsibility and doing something about it. So, okay, I promise. That's it. I love you guys. I hope today's podcast has helped you. If it did, definitely drop a like. Leave a review. Leave a review on iTunes. Please, please, please leave a review wherever you listen to it. On Stitcher, on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Plus, Google Play. I think I'm taking that from the the Apple 238, what I usually say at the end of the, the YouTube deals. But if you're on YouTube, definitely leave a comment about this, uh, like a review comment, I guess you say, like you would do a normal podcast. Like the video, share it, share it, share it, share it, share it. Tell everybody you know on planet Earth about the Apple 230 and this Yappa Sog podcast if it truly has impacted your life. Love you guys. I got to run. God bless in Jesus' name.